All the Magic the Gathering Lore Part 8, Weatherlight, Tempest, Stronghold, and Exodus. This is one of the largest lore videos in this entire series. There are multiple books written about Weatherlight alone, and then multiple about the other sets as well. So this is as condensed as I could get it, but it's still going to be a long one. It's also extremely important, so make sure to watch to the end. After five years in exile, Yogmoth was suddenly recalled to the Thran capital of Halcyon, where people remained unaware of his inhumane actions. A high-profile medical emergency had recently shaken the capital. Glacian, the chief artificer and technology genius of the Thran Empire, had been attacked and stabbed with a power stone, after which he had caught a strange disease impervious to Thran healing magic. With nowhere else to turn for help, Glacian's wife, Rebecca used her influence as chief architect to bring Yogmoth back, hoping his expertise in eugenics could find a cure. Yogmoth's medical expertise quickly bore fruit. He discovered that Glacian's disease, which he called it's on the screen, was caused by extensive exposure to power stone radiation, the very energy source that powered Thran's advanced civilization. Most of the untouchables, exiled Thran who lived in the caves of Koilos beneath the power stone producing mana rig, had also caught the disease. Upon hearing this, the man who had stabbed Glacian, Gix, started rallying his fellow untouchables to rebel and take vengeance upon the Thran. Yogmoth convinced Halcyon's elders to give him more funding and apprentices to study the disease. The healer Zod gave him the idea to use metals to create a serum against Phthisis. When Gix and his supporters came to Halcyon, planning to start a massive rebellion, Yogmoth managed to quell it by offering free serum to the untouchables. For his actions, Yogmoth was made a member of the Council of Halcyon and was allowed to make laws to regulate public health. Yogmoth started sending infected people down to the caves of Koilos and had healthy untouchables return to the city, using this to eliminate his enemies from the city. During this time, Rebecca had and Yogmoth had started falling in love, although neither of them acted deeply upon it. It was eventually discovered that Yogmoth was diluting the serum he gave to the untouchables, claiming a lack of resources. This caused Gix to feel rebellious again, and he started to send untouchables, both healthy and sick, up to Halcyon. Yogmoth used the development to attain more funding and complete control over the Halcyte Guard. One day, the planeswalker Dyfed visited Glacian, wanting to meet the genius in real life, and also to learn about his spark, though she said nothing of it. Yogmoth wanted in on the meeting and managed to talk Dyfed into aiding him. Dyfed agreed to find a plane where Yogmoth could build his paradise. When Gix led another large riot in the city, Yogmoth was prepared. He made an artifact based on Glacian's design to control all Power Stone technology in the city. With it and the Halcyte Guard, he managed to stop the invasion and force Gix into complete obedience. After the city had been rebuilt, Halcyon had a great festival to honor Yogmoth, but a strange group of delegates appeared shortly before it could commence. Their representatives of the nation Yogmoth experimented on during his exile, and they came to declare war on all who stood by Yogmoth. Faced with the threat of a full-scale war with the United Nations, the Thran Council voted on whether Yogmoth could stay, but the votes went 50-50. It came down to the last two members of the council, Yogmoth and Rebek themselves. Voting together to ensure Yogmoth's safety in the city, he immediately overthrew the council and imprisoned its elders, as well as the delegates. Some time later, Dyfed opened a permanent portal from Dominaria to Phyrexia, the plane which Yogmoth wanted to make his paradise. Yogmoth bound himself to the plane within its core, becoming a god while staying there. He started to bring Phthisis patients to Phyrexia, where they were implanted with empty power stones that drained away their sickness. The patients slowly began to evolve as well, growing longer, thinner, stronger, and faster. Yogmoth hid the two halves of the power stone Dyfed cracked to power the portal inside Glacian's wounds. Yogmoth fared quite well while warring with the alliance of nations against him. Using the Halcyte Guard, soldiers mutated in Phyrexia, and stone chargers, he could overcome any army that stood against him. Even when Dyfed turned on him, he did not give in. When she was stunned at the horror that Phyrexia had become, he stabbed her in the back of the head with a power stone dagger, disabling the planeswalker, hoping to dissect her and learn of what had enabled her to planeswalk. Rebecca removed the power stone, however, mercy killing Dyfed. But not all went well for Yogmoth. He had used the Null Sphere to filter away the deadly gases left behind by the stone chargers before they reached Halcyon. When the artificers that controlled it sacrificed their own lives to sabotage the sphere, Halcyon was destroyed and its inhabitants fleeing to Phyrexia or being eaten away. Yogmoth had planned to stay in Phyrexia for a while and emerge again when the death cloud had lifted, 
But Rebecca had finally seen what a monstrosity he was, and used the power stones Yagmoth had planted in her husband to close the portal between Phyrexia and Dominaria, locking Yagmoth and his followers out for all eternity, or so she hoped. For ages, Yagmoth continued to alter the Thran that had come to Phyrexia while fleeing the fallout of stone chargers, transforming them into the first true Phyrexians. Using planar portals, the Phyrexians journeyed to many planes which they conquered, while they used its inhabitants as raw material for the newts, as Phyrexians who were not been augmented yet were known. But Yagmoth was not happy, for somehow Rebek had completely locked him out of Dominaria. Then came the day when the archaeologist brothers Urza and Mishra disturbed the power stone sealing the portal while exploring the caves of Koilos. Yagmoth sent Gix, now a fully completed Phyrexian and a member of his inner circle, through the portal as a scout. Gix planned to manipulate the brothers, who had started a war, having his minions, the Brotherhood of Gix, infiltrate both sides and eventually replacing Mishra with a Phyrexian. Gix hoped to magnify the war until it had destroyed all civilization on the continent, allowing for a simple infiltration by the Phyrexian forces built up by Yagmoth over the centuries. During the war's end, Urza activated the Golgothian Silex, an artifact so powerful it completely devastated the world of Dominaria. Gix fled back to Phyrexia, telling Yagmoth of what had happened. Gix's plan to infiltrate Dominarian society via the sleeper agents were approved by the Dark God, but the first few attempts failed since all the agents looked alike. The sudden appearance of many people looking exactly similar has caused panic among the Dominarians, who proceeded to kill any they came across. Gix planned to try again, but then the Shard of the Twelve Worlds was completed. The Shard had been a side effect of the Silex Blast. It locked Twelve Worlds away from the other planes of the multiverse, trapping many planeswalkers inside, but also keeping the Phyrexians outside. A furious Yagmoth had Gix thrown into the seventh sphere of Phyrexia, where he would be tortured for all eternity. Then Urza, who had died in the blast but was reborn as a planeswalker, attacked Phyrexia. Moments before he activated the Silex, Urza discovered his brother had been turned into a machine and gone completely insane, blaming those responsible for turning his brother into machine for all the wrongs of the brother's war. To add more fire to his hate, Urza's eyes had been replaced with the Might Stone and the Weak Stone, the two halves of the Power Stone that contained Glacian's spirit. Having met the Newt Zancha, who had been intended as a sleeper agent, but had been turned into an expendable servant now that the agents couldn't be deployed, Urza had discovered Phyrexia was responsible and had created a monstrous machine dragon to attack the plane, but he managed to blast a gigantic hole into the plane all the way down to the fourth sphere. Yogmoth himself invaded Urza's mind and made him go even more insane. Urza fled and for years traveled from plane to plane, the Phyrexians always on his heels, for Yogmoth couldn't let someone who planned to destroy Phyrexia go unpunished. Urza was eventually healed by Sarah, but after he left, the Phyrexians invaded Sarah's realm and corrupted it. This is the point when Sarah goes to Dominaria and Olgrotha in Homelands. Then, in the Ice Age, Freya Lees, desperate to be free from the Shard, cast the World Spell, opening Dominaria to Yagmoth once again. He released Gix from his torment, since he knew more about fighting Urza and infiltrating Dominaria than anyone else. But while Gix was initially successful, Urza returned to his home plane as well. He first destroyed all the sleeper agents, then killed Gix. Now Yagmoth was ready to invade Dominaria again, with new weapons and a rebuilt army. At this point, Urza completed many experiments to try and push back the next Phyrexian invasion, which he knew would come eventually. This includes the Bloodline Project and the Legacy Project, both of which will be talked about more in the Urza's Block lore video, so make sure to keep an eye out for that one. Sisse was a descendant of the genetically modified Jalfirans from Urza's Bloodline Project, and was orphaned when Yagmoth attempted to wipe the Bloodline out. She soon learned how to captain the Re Weatherlight. She finds out about the legacy weapon and begins to search for it, recruiting a crew along the way. While on Wrath searching for the legacy, Sisse is kidnapped and her first mate is left trying to lead the mission. Gerard Capuchin was a former member of the Weatherlight crew but had quit after his best friend died and he blamed himself. He was also a descendant of the Bloodline and was worthy to fly the Weatherlight. Gerard is convinced to rejoin the crew and help rescue Sisse. Wrath was a plane created by the Phyrexians as a staging area where they build their armies to invade Dominaria. While searching for the legacy, Sisse is taken there and kidnapped, being held by the evil Volrath who was once Gerard's brother. Karn and Erdtai from the Talarian Academy join the crew and Gerard leads them to Wrath. 
High above the Plains of Wrath, Gerard and the crew of the flying ship Weatherlight are attacked by the awesome power of Volrath's battleship, the Predator. Volrath's forces, led by the fierce Greven Ilvec, board the Weatherlight in an attempt to steal Gerard's mysterious legacy. Gerard and Greven come face to face in gruesome combat as the crew of the Weatherlight fight for their lives. Gerard is thrown overboard and presumed dead. The Weatherlight sustains heavy damage, and Hannah, Gerard's love and navigator on the Weatherlight, is forced to set it down for repairs. Squee is able to repair the ship, but the first mate and Karn are captured. The Weatherlight crew raided the stronghold on Wrath, Gerard leading them. They reach the stronghold, but to reach the throne room, they have to fight through the furnace and death pits, later reflected on New Phyrexia as the autonomous furnace and the dross pits. They fight through and reach the dungeon, freeing Sisse and Karn. Meanwhile, Urtai is receiving help from a witch on a different part of the plane to open an interplanar portal that will take them away from Wrath. As the Weatherlight crew fights Volrath, they enter the Dream Hall, where they are shown the terrible future of Dominaria. Fighting through their terrible fears and thoughts, Gerard is able to lead the Weatherlight out of the stronghold. The Predator attacks them as they flee, and they are forced to use an experimental super speed mode developed by Karn. They reach the portal, and Gerard tells Hannah to slow down to let Urtai on board, but they can't stop, and once the weather light is through the portal, it closes, stranding Urtai on Wrath. The story will continue in the Mercadian Masks block video.